see you all this morning. <laughs> and didn't we have weather yesterday? I'm getting webs between my toes. I, I tell you, this, is so over this is awful, and this is not winter, folks. I don't no. care what anybody says, this is so far not winter. But maybe we shouldn't complain. Well, I'm not complaining a whole lot. No, I'm not either. Although I would but, like snow. I like snow. Uh, I don't like slush, but I right. like snow. And I don't like ice. But no. anyway, you know, the weather has been, and, and in a few minutes, we'll see what the weather's going to be for the, today and the rest of this week. It's oh. been 60 degrees in New York City for the last two days. I know it. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I think it's going to be there today, too. I, I, I didn't get a chance. Uh, it's just ridiculous, anything, folks. It is. It's just ridiculous. But we're glad you're here with us this <laughs> morning. And we have a couple of little things. You know, Brene and I. This is Brene Beatty, by the way. She's retired. Retired. Lady of leisure. I'm Nancy Kaysen. I have a little gift shop across the street from the museum called the Red Ribbon. And uh, uh, Brene's enjoying her retirement. Oh, yes. I am. I am. I am. She am. She am. She am. Did you get that? I mean, yes. in case there's any doubt in your mind about whether or not... Now, she does do volunteer work, but she doesn't sign up to do it at on, on a regular basis. No. If you need her for an event, I'm using her for Cherry's Jubilee. Well, I've already talked to her about that. If you need her for an event, give her a call. I do PRN volunteering. Mm -hmm. So that, And that means not every Tuesday at 4 o'clock. She's That's not right. going to do that. But no. we no do more schedules. No, she's not, <laughs> she's no schedules anymore. But we have a few things to tell yes. you all about that are coming up in, in Cleveland, Bradley County. And the first thing I want to tell you about is the Red Shoe Gala. Mm -hmm. No Place Like Home, and this is a fundraiser for CASA of Bradley County. It'll be February the 11th, that's a Saturday, and it'll start at 6 o'clock in the Weaver's Room at the Old Woolen Mill. And uh, I think everybody knows where that is, but it's over on South Church Street. Yeah. $35 for an individual, $60 per couple. See, you'll save a little bit of money if you go as a couple. Yep. And the attire, I love this, was dressed to match your shoes. And wear red shoes. Well, I was just going to wear maybe a pair of boots and a pair of blue jeans, but, you know, that's probably not what they meant. Do you have red huh? boots? I do not have red I, boots. Well, no. it's a red shoe gala. Ah, I'm so sorry. I guess you have to wear red. Yes. Ooh, do I have a pair of red shoes? Oh. Ooh, shopping. Ooh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. And CASA or CASA, however you want to say it, C-A-S-A, -S -A, no matter what, how you pronounce it, what it stands for is Court Appointed Special Advocates for Children. And yes. this is a very important group yes, here. It's it something is. we have not had. We now have it developed, and mm -hmm. I believe they're one of the grantees of the hospital funds from United Way. So that's helping them. But, but what they do is when, when there's a court situation mm -hmm. and the child needs to be represented, oftentimes the child isn't. Mm -hmm. If it's like a really bad divorce, the dad has a lawyer, the mother has a lawyer, but nobody represents the child. So, so that's what this group does. They, they're, they're there to be sure that children are represented in legal yes. situations. And so that is coming up February the 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, Young Americans at Cleveland State, February 16th through the 18th. The primary goals of the Young Americans program are to encourage music in the nation's schools, to train young people in performance, and to strengthen character. The program includes young people learning, growing, respecting other strengths, having fun, and discovering their own potential through music and performance. Students participate in vocal ensembles, staging, choreography, developing performance attitudes, dance, and musical theater. Uh, it, we hosted, last time they were it's, here, we hosted mm -hmm. a young woman who was part of it, and it is a very intense right. three days. and. Uh, and the, the performance at the end of it that the kids put on mm -hmm. is absolutely phenomenal. And there's three days of intensive performance instruction and then showtime. The performance will be at Cleveland Middle School on February the 18th in the gymnasium at 7.30. So there is a charge for uh, your child to participate and you can call Cleveland State mm -hmm. and ask for Karen Dale. And we do need host families yes. for the... Um, you know, for the entertainers, for the, the entertainers, the teachers, the teachers the, yeah. that are coming in, mm -hmm. and we did that, and it was wonderful. You don't see them much because they're gone at the right. crack of dawn, and they're they're there until nine o'clock at night. And that's good. But yeah, those are good friend, uh, visitors. To <laughs> they are. They mm -hmm. are. That's very good. Uh, Lee University Spring Theater season will open. Um, They'll begin February 16th through the 20th at 7.30 and February the 19th at 2.30. That's a Sunday matinee. And the Edna Minor Con Theater, which is Vest 305, if that helps any of y'all. Now, I will tell you that Flavis and I have done this, and we love it. We go to the Sunday matinee, mm -hmm. and it's, they're so good, and they're so much fun. And the name of this, and I'm, you know, somebody from Lee call me sometime today and tell me about this. Elmosinary. 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 Yeah. 
It's the first performance, and it portrays three women. It's a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter as they struggle to define themselves as individuals and part of a family union unit. And it is recommended for 12 years and up. So, uh, and then in April, they're going to do the British farce, See How They Run, which that one will be cute. I yeah. doubt that Flavis and I will go see the first one, but we will definitely be going to the matinee on See How They Run because we just really enjoy doing that. That's yeah. We go to church, go eat lunch, and then go, go, to, go, go to, to a the show. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a Very good. Yes. Uh, career, the career coach will be at the library on uh, February the 7th at, from 9.30 until 3 p.m. to assist you in your job search. Representatives from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce uh, Development will be present. So do you need reservations or do you just show up? Prob I don't I don't know the answer to that question. Call the library. Call, yes, they know always. everything. Call this the is, library. This is a mm -hmm. library program. Mm -hmm. Oh, and me again. Get you again. Ooh, mm -hmm. you fool me, Nancy. I know, and okay. I try to do that just to be sure she's <laughs> on her toes. Stay me away. <laughs> she's not over there sleeping. Yes. I know. Uh, Walker Valley HOSA, that's the Health Occupation Students of America's Club, uh, are having a fundraising daddy-daughter dance. And I think this is February the 11th. I think this is the neatest thing I do too. for daddy-daughter bonding. I do, too. And it's for daughters nine and under, and that will be held from 4 until 6 p.m. And the daddy-daughter dance for older daughters will be held from 7 until 9 p.m. And the tickets are $20 per couple and $5 for each additional daughter if you have more than one. And for tickets, call 336-1383. And if you have daughters in both categories, call them and maybe you can negotiate a, a deal, a discount. Photographs, yes. uh, refreshments, refreshments, and, and photographs. It's the whole nine yards. With that, yeah, with that I mean, twenty dollars. So right. Yeah. So you know, it, it it might be that they're not willing to negotiate, but that's okay. Yeah, we don't because know, it is it, a fundraiser. It never hurts to ask. It absolutely not. And the Chattanooga Symphony is going to do a youth concert for our local students on February 22nd at North Cleveland Church of God. And we'll have more information about that mm -hmm. for you as we get closer to it. But the program will feature the timeless children's classic, Peter, Peter and the, the Wolf. Wolf. I love that Dum one. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, I, I remember bum, taking bum, my kids bum, to that. <laughs> oh, I love Peter and the Wolf. Mm -hmm. And the music is wonderful. And they'll also uh, have some excerpts from some other things. Um, and this opportunity is sponsored by the Cleveland Symphony Guild. And it's for third, fourth, and fifth graders. And Peggy Pesterfield, the youth concert, youth concert chairperson, said yes. this concert is very important as it may be the only time some of our students can experience symphonic music. And it may also be the only time some of us adults experience exactly. symphonic music. But it's really, really um, a wonderful experience. I have worked mm -hmm. the concert before, yeah. holding up a sign that says third grade, you know, <laughs> so that everybody knows where they're supposed to see it. But it's, it's really, really a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. That volunteering. Volunteers are so important volunteers. for so many. Oh, they are. They are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and lots of people can do it even if you're not doing it on a regular basis. Right. And a lot of people are needed to hold up those signs. Yes. Hopewell, third grade. You know, you got to step, somebody's got to hold up the signs. That's right. Uh, stitches in Time. We've been talking about this quilt Boy, show for a we. long time, mm -hmm. but it is now going on and open to the yes, public. It is. And Nancy has a quilt. I do, I have a quilt. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Saturday, February the 4th. Uh, Mary Kiesler will be sharing her quilting techniques with beginners and veteran quilters. And let me tell you, if you haven't seen her quilts, they're pieces of they, art. They are works of art. Mm -hmm, they I really mean, are. That woman is just. Oh, so talented. She has shown quilts in national, international right. uh, competitions and everything and, and written it up in books and I mean she's just really good and if you can get here to see her or have her class or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. oh good for you. Mm -hmm. Call the museum 339-5745 for more information. And the thing about her quilts, in fact we actually, the, yes. the day we had Lisa Lutz on to talk about this, we had her quilts on with us, and they're, mm -hmm. they're actually wall hangings. Yeah. This is not something you're going to cozy up on the sofa under no, and no. let your dog it's, sit it's on. It's not like what Granny gave you. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, these, are, these, are, these are works of art. They really, oh, really they are. are. They are. Uh, then we have the Presidential Concert Series at Lee University. You know, there's a lot that goes on at Lee. A lot. Yes. Uh, and this will feature gu guitarist Manuel Baruco. And I, here again, Lee, I apologize. You need to start putting pronunciations beside these names when we yes. get this information. But he will be there February the 9th at 7.30 in the Dixon Center. Now, it's my understanding, this is the way this normally works, and I'm going to assume it's still this way. You need to call the box office, 614-8343 at Lee University, and you reserve the ticket. The tickets are free. Mm -hmm. 
but, but you there's must limited reserve seating. it because there's limited seating for each of these. Although the Dixon Center is a pretty good size facility, right? But still, you need to call and reserve the tickets, and then you can pick the tickets up at the box office on um, weekdays, February second through the ninth, from three until six, and and that's uh, it, it's a wonderful opportunity to hear yeah. some really good music, yes. different type things that are brought mm -hmm. in. Yes, exactly. And one thing we wanted to tell you about, you notice Nancy and I are wearing red, red. because tomorrow is uh, Go Red for Women. Yes. Uh, it's for heart health and uh, a lot of people, you know, cancer and breast cancer in particular gets a lot of press, but because uh, they have a really good marketing firm. Yes, they do. But yes, they do. Uh, heart <laughs> disease is the number one killer of women. It kills more women than all the cancers put together right. annually. Right. I mean, really. So go get your heart checked. You know, absolutely. And eat and, lots of vegetables. And that's right. And the symptoms for women's heart yes. attacks are different yes. from the symptoms that men have. We may not have chest pains. We might have jaw pain. Mm -hmm. We might have back pain. Nausea. Uh, even. Nausea. We. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're just we're different. different. We're we're made different and. And so these are things that you need to be aware of, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you do need to have a checkup. In fact, I get an EKG every year, and not sure what it tells, except my doctor says, oh, this is fine, you know, yeah. and as long as he says this is fine, I'm okay with that. Yeah, and you need to watch your cholesterol. We do, I yes. do that. I do that. So, and you uh, need to have checks on your blood pressure mm -hmm. to be sure that you're, and you're not saw, running high. I saw on TV the other day, um, I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> She's retired, now, retired you know. But I'm get, learning a lot of stuff. Are you? Yes, they're saying now that doctors don't, uh, or in the past they have not checked blood pressure correctly, that they need to check it on this arm, and then they also need to check it on the other arm. And if there's a 15 points different in either one, the higher or the lower one, then you need to do some more stuff. Be concerned. Be concerned because, uh, and if it's Whoa. high, also uh, you can ask them to check it again later because it's what they call white, white coat, coat syndrome. syndrome. Uh -huh. <laughs> because you go in and you're in the doctor's office and you're going. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And the first thing they do when you get set down in there, before you have time to get your nerves calmed or anything else, they take your blood pressure. Yes. So, you, if, you know, if it's higher than you think it should be, ask them to wait a little while and check it again. But ask them to do both arms. Or tell them to take off that white coat and see if that That's helps right. any. You know, <laughs> exactly. Might, you never know. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm playing flute in the greater, <gasps> That's yes, right. in the greater That's Cleveland right. Community Band. I have not played the flute in 45 years except maybe around the piano during Christmas to play Silent Night or something like that for the family only. So I joined the, the band and played in the Christmas concert, mm -hmm. which was wonderful experience. I mean, I'm really enjoying it. Good. So now I'm going to be playing in the, the spring concert, which will be April the 24th, and it's called April 1865, which is going to be Civil War music. Yes. And, oh, it is absolutely gorgeous. For North and work. South. And the reason we're doing yes. it, it's Cleveland, Bradley County, was, was kind of divided during the Civil War. Split. Uh, Lots of yeah, families. We had split. a lot of the families that were Union sympathizers, a lot that were, were Southern sympathizers, some from the same family. Actually, oh, we brother were against brother, brother against yes. brother here in Cleveland Bradley My County. My family so, had uh, some. Mine wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what we're doing, we'll have two huge video screens up on the wall, and we want to project Civil War pictures, Bradley County Civil War pictures. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has any of those, their family or the farm that maybe there was a battle on here or anything, Charleston, you all are so seeped in Civil War history. Yes. I mean, it's unbelievable. So anybody that has any history there that can help us out with some photographs, we just want to borrow them for about five minutes and scan them so that we can have them up on the screen. And also any of you that have relatives that fought on either side during the Civil War, we would like for you, and so call me at the Red Ribbon, 473-1114. And we're going to take just a real short little commercial break here, and we're going to come back with Kay Smith to talk to us about Grandma's Yellow Pipeline and who gets it. So don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. 
When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring, a beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango, redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. Right. And we are back, and we yes. hope you're still with us. With and Grandma's Yellow Pipe Light. Grandma's Yellow Pipe Light. Now, we have talked to y'all about this. And yes. so over here uh, with us is Kay Smith. She's from the UT Extension Office, Bradley County, Bradley down on County. Church Street. Down on Church Street. And she's going to talk to us about what's going on with Grandma's Yellow Pipe Light. Yes. It's one of our programs that we have to offer. And I brought my pie plate, and I, and I said I had to hunt for it because, you know, you got to have the right plate for yeah. the right <laughs> program. Mm -hmm. But this is the program we've been offering. I had received a grant several years ago, and the grant let me do some estate planning programs, and we talk about wills and things like that. And then as we got into the, uh, the wills, we realized, you know, it's not just property. We have other property and that's things. why we the things <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and some things have a lot of value some we pass down from one generation mm -hmm. to the next and we want to be sure it it has a home in the next mm -hmm. generation and mm -hmm. so but then we have a generation that has come up that's not interested sometimes right and mm -hmm. that's what we're finding that they're not really interested so it's helping you to begin a conversation and really look at your things seriously to see okay, what do we really, really want to pass down and what's just stuff? Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things that you would have to look at, you know, yeah. as, as you look at that. Um, I, I wrote down some tips here just to help us because we're used to dealing with the will and your home and your property and your savings and mm -hmm. those kind of things. But you're, we're looking at your um, other, it's called non-titled property. I don't know if you knew that. So that's what they call non it. Non-title. That's mm -hmm. good. I call it stuff. It's stuff. stuff. <laughs> okay. It's well, stuff. we call it non-title. Okay. okay. That sounds and more impressive I, it, than stuff. It's actually Sorry. jewelry. You know, we yeah. talked about jewelry mm -hmm. already, mm -hmm. and you know, and we think this child needs that, but well, maybe not. So, yeah. so you know, you may have to look at that. Stamp collections were mentioned in the material, oh. and you think, oh, oh yeah, my goodness. you know, people Who would think about that. Yeah, well, yeah. my husband has some stamps. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. and I thought that was an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. or, and of course, everybody has different collections. Right. And some are, have some value. Your dishes. You know, that's why we have the mm -hmm. pipe plate. And sometimes we have memories of how it's been used along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. My so, mother's pink fudge plate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See? <laughs> that Those has big fudge on it. Oh, when yeah. Renee brings the fudge, it's good. And the good sports equipment. Yeah. You know, I know we have a, my uh, father-in-law's golfing equipment. Yeah. It's the bags and golf clubs and all that. And I thought, yeah. well, you well, know, you just don't something. think about yeah. it. That's right. Yeah. 
Um, and furniture, you know, we talked about, oh, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. there's furniture and then there's furniture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and there's some mm -hmm. things we, we really want to be passed mm -hmm. down. But again, where's it going to go? Because people have other things in their house already and where are they going to store it? So there's mm -hmm. some conversations that need to be brought up. So that's just the beginning of the things that we have that we need to mm -hmm. talk about as we look at uh, grandma's pipeline right. you know, and making decisions. And those are non-titled. And non-title simply means there's no legal document we were talking about getting right. on paper uh -huh. to indicate indicate who officially owns the item now your will is going to have a name mm -hmm. or an account or whatever right. you're going to have that but not your non-title and we were talking earlier about mm -hmm. making a list or getting a picture of things right wonderful thing to do because I've done I've gone through my house primarily for insurance purposes yeah well it's you know, a good insurance yeah mm -hmm. and then just taking digital photographs mm -hmm. and then I've got it uh, on on my computer up in the cloud somewhere I hope we can <laughs> find it if <laughs> you've ever needed it. <laughs> but I was thinking about you know little things like jewelry we'll put on a dry picture photos on a drive yeah. or something where you can store right. it mm -hmm. which then take up a lot mm -hmm. of space yeah That'd be but the thing to do. Um, you know and then label it because the picture's no good. The if, picture if they is don't no know good. The right. of if you it. don't That's say exactly what right. it was yeah. or who it belonged to right. or, or whatever, just a little yeah. brief history, history with about it. it or something. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be an epistle, but just just mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit, just so that the next person can yeah. see it and know. Because we might not be able to tell that next person. Exactly. You know, that is true. That's yes. the thing, and 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 we need to do it when we can still do those kind of mm -hmm. things. And it's not like we still remember who it belonged to. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And it's not like your favorite activity. You know, a lot no. of times you'd much rather no. be doing shopping or something That's else. That's right. And when but, you mention will too, that's it's kind of like oh, nobody wants to sit down and write their will. So yeah. this is just one step away from the will. It's just another step. It, yeah. it is, yeah. but it's still an important one right. because yeah. you're making decisions about your property. And some things, you don't care what happens yeah. to them. They're just things. But some things really have meaning, especially if they've had something historically uh, right. happen in the family that it pertained to. And so, so many times when, when someone dies and there's these things, uh, I mean, I've seen families split over, oh. you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, never speak to each other again. <laughs> over a over, thing. Over a, th a over grandma's thing. yellow pipe right. light or yeah, something like yeah. that. And if you discuss it before you go, I mean, it, I mean, it's, there well, at least you have control least, exactly. over right. some of that. Now, yeah. you don't know what happens after you're gone. Exactly. I mean, oh, no. That can change completely. But I think it gives you a sense of, mm -hmm. of closure in your in your exactly. life, you know, that mm -hmm. you have this done. And a lot of people say, a lot of us don't have anything. Oh. Uh, it's not it's worth amazing. a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I say, you don't know. You've got a lot of things. That's and right. And you have memories that you need mm -hmm. to remember. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is to start talking yeah. and, mm -hmm. and use... Uh, occasions, uh, if something happens on TV and say, oh, we need to talk about this ourselves, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and sometimes with their children, they might might listen. Yeah. Um, sometimes when they're really young, they're not interested, but as they get older, there may be some things that they want to right. know about. And, and some little things that from yeah. early childhood, yeah. they remember and, well, and want, I want that because yeah. I remember when Granny did so and so. Yeah. yeah. One of the issues is being fair. You know, we were talking about, <laughs> yeah. sometimes that's really hard because you think, well, I'll give this to this, this child or this one to this. And really, it, that may not be the best distribution. Yeah. So that's what we kind of talk about. Okay. And the material that we're using comes from the University of Minnesota Extension. They did an extensive study mm -hmm. and used a lot of references. And it really makes you start thinking about, okay, what is fair and how do we determine what is fair? Because yeah. I think that's the thing we look at. Um, I, I wrote down a few things on how we distribute things. Mm -hmm. One is put it in the wheel. Of course, that's hard when you, go, yeah. you know, start you big things. You've got little things. Got little yes. things. Mm -hmm. we, what we work on is a list. And see, with mm -hmm. your photos, wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, ahead of time, you, you know, people deal with that. Uh -huh. Gifting. And sometimes, as we can, we just go ahead and give. Because mm -hmm. I know I have some things in my home that my mother gave me years ago. And, I, mm -hmm. and they have special meaning to me because they were gifted. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, and later on, she wasn't able to do that. So it has more meaning right. that way. And I've already gifted my mother's jewelry to my niece, which yeah. so she could wear it. Yeah. yeah. See, and she already has it. Yes. And there's no mm -hmm. discussion. She can, right. she can deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, even labeling things. Sometimes, right. you know, we have things, and <laughs> you may put a note on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really official. 
because notes can get removed. That is yeah. true. So that's why you need that official list, you know, that yeah. can be, and that, that can be added into your will, you know, this yeah. official list. So there's some ways to do that. Um, in our class, we're going to talk about doing family auctions. There's a silent auction and then oh. a, a family. Oh, cool. And you know, I've it's seen really antique road shows. Fun. People yeah. say, we had a, a yeah. little auction of the yeah. family things and I bought this. So And it works. Okay. Um, because everybody, you know, you're not using real money, mm -hmm. but right. you're using, you know, it, but it helps them to see what values things are. Right. This person, this is really valuable. Or no, this one's not. Yeah. So again, those are things that you might want to look at. Of course, you know, we know the public auctions, you know, those oh, are yeah. the big things. Oh, yeah. And the estate sales and, you know, mm -hmm. those are there. Um, the workbook that we use um, is this one. And it just says, uh, who gets grandma's yellow pipeline. I love that. And you'll, you'll like that. Yes. And um, in my estate planning, I also, let's see if I've got my little booklet here. I also have a little booklet here that I think everybody needs is what uh, my family should know about me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this isn't a 30-minute activity. This is a very extensive, this little booklet, because yeah. it's just things that they need to know. And it, uh, to me, it'd be a great pass down to the next generation yeah, that's that neat. they can read. Because most time, you know, people pass on, and we don't know a whole lot about them sometimes, especially if we've not when lived close. After mm -hmm. my grandmother died, I really got interested in family history, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. you know, because she used to love to talk. Yeah, and we'd yeah. go, oh, Nana. Yeah. Well, my brother and died early, we... and so to kind of entertain my mm -hmm. mother some, I sat with her, and uh, she was at a retirement home in Maryville. Uh -huh. I'd go up there once yeah. a week and I would just, we'd write. I'd say, okay, tell me oh. everything you know about Grandmother oh, Coindexter. Oh, how cool. Oh, we did nice. all of that. The that next nice. week we would do yeah. uh, one of the granddaddies and then we did another. So I wow. have this notebook full that now I need to get typed yeah. up and out to the out to my son and to the nieces and nephews. So yes. I think those have you such are great so meaning. Smart. That's great. That's, well, that's it was wonderful. kind of a way to entertain her too. She was yeah. very depressed. Yeah. You know, you're not supposed to outlive your children and, and oh, she did. Yeah. And so yeah. it was she was going through a rough time and I thought, well this this will help. Yeah. But now when is this work? Well we're gonna start on Mon uh, Mon oh, excuse me. This is Thursday. I've got two classes that week. <laughs> Thursday, February twenty third. Okay. Which is the, about three weeks away, right. I think. And we do it from two to four, and it'll be down at our office. We're at uh, 95 Church Street, right downtown Cleveland, right, right off Inman Street at the UT Extension mm -hmm. building. And uh, you just, to call, just call our office, 728-7001, uh, and we'll just be glad to give you the information about it. Just a small charge for the workbook is right. what we and do. Right, and something that Renee and I have mm -hmm. found is if they're offering something down there, Sign up they early. are not the best kept secret in Cleveland <laughs> no. Bradley County, folks, because Brene and I were going to take a course the last time, the last, the last one time about how oh, to really? make yeah. Christmas things out yeah. of. Oh the yeah. yeah, boy, we called. Oh, yeah. so we if were you're interested we were in this, yeah. and and Kay and I have talked about this. I have an antique pump organ that my mm -hmm. granny left me. Mm -hmm. Left actually left left me in charge of. I'm the keeper of antiques at my in my house. With the strict instructions, it was to go to my nephew, who is a musician. My nephew does not want the right. antique pump organ. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, now... She, she's going to come back and bump she will. on the head. She's going to get me. <laughs> she's going to get me. And uh, so this is one of the things that we're going to talk about. Yeah. And if you give us that phone number one more time, right. Kate. Our number is 728 Seven zero zero one. Seven zero zero one. And Kay, thank you so much for coming in and being with us. Sure. And it's who's going to get Grandma's yellow pie plate? Right. And you may think this is kind of doesn't That's pertain right. to you, but honestly, folks, it, oh, everybody sit down it, and think about it. And Kay is wonderful to work with. Yes, and I think you. this is going to be so entertaining and enlightening. Yes. So okay. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy and I both have signed up we for have, it. We've yeah, signed up. Yes. And we, we got in this time. <laughs> we did. We did. So thank you, Kay, for being with thank us. Folks, you. don't go away. We're going to be right back with Joe Davis from the Veterans Administration, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the VA home that hopefully yes. is coming to Bradley County. Soon. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson.
Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. And we are back. And yes, here's chit chat. <laughs> uh oh. Caught. Joe and I are have I found that Joe and I are related two or three different ways. And so that's we're kind of chit chatting about some of that and doing history. Joe Davis is with us and, and you're from the it is it Veterans Administration, Bradley County. Is that, am I saying that right? No, it's not exactly right. Close oh, enough. Okay, I'm okay. I'm a veteran service officer. Veteran service officer, okay. The difference being I work for Bradley County, a veterans affairs person would actually work for the VA. Okay. All right. But we're so tickled to have Joe with us today, and you have an office at the courthouse. Yes, room 105. And and uh, he's in there with Larry McDarris, and who else is in there? You have a you have a crew in there. Yeah, Sheree Nations, and our director is Larry McDarris. Okay, and and so I wanted Joe to come on today because we have a lot of a lot of mumbling going on about a mm -hmm. VA home in Bradley County and and we were on TV I think Tuesday night I believe I saw Larry on there then and, and this has been in the works for quite a while so Joe just tell us a little bit about what we're talking about here yes it was the governor's state of the state uh, message he had on TV the night and released some money from the state toward our community living center uh, that's what it's all about he's used the figures a little more than what it actually is the total cost of the building is about 23 million mm -hmm. so the, he didn't mean to say that he meant to say a lot less. He, they're not going to build the entire building. Oh, <laughs> well, I noticed it did say $23 million. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, Slip so the I, lip. I clear that up, I think. Okay. okay. It's mm -hmm. about $3 million, which will cover some of the initial startup costs once yeah. the home opens up. Okay. I think that's where it's going to wind up. I'm on the uh, State Veterans Home Board in Murfreesboro, and part of our duties as a board is to build the homes and minister to the running of each facility. There's three in Tennessee now. Uh, Montgomery County is on the list ahead of us. And we're behind them, and we the list is, is on the secretary Zelensky's desk in Washington now. What what happens is basically you get your name on the list and you move up the list. You get the top list. The VA will release a matching fund, and you get to go out and build your home. Wow. In the state of Tennessee, we actually build our home, and actually run it. And again, it's called living community centers. That's a new term the VA has uh, said they want their homes built like, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a part of homes in a wagon wheel uh, design where there's 12 veterans living in each home, each pod. How neat. Yeah, it kind of yeah. reminds them of actually being at home. There's mm -hmm. fireplaces in there and there's oh, things great. like that yeah. to, where they actually feel like they're at home. So that it's is It's a very so unique neat. and state-of-the-art kind of thing the VA is doing. Okay, so what, what kind of uh, requirements to live there? 
Just be a veteran from the state of Tennessee. Oh. Now, I, cool. I, there's a difference in a veteran's home and a veteran's hospital. That's right. And we're not going to build a hospital here. That's right. A lot of folks get confused about right. that. So it's a living community center, uh, a nursing facility that veterans can go to at the end of their life when they start having uh, highly skilled requirements, medical requirements. That's what it's for. Okay. And most likely it'd be for low income type veterans if that's a need. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need in this part of the state pretty bad. The closest one here is Knoxville. The other two are Murfreesboro and Humboldt. And I said earlier, Montgomery County, that's Clarksville, is on the list to build one just like what we're doing here, a 108-bed facility. And I can see where Crossville would be on the list because we have the 101st Airborne yes, that's right. is in Crossville. So yeah. you're going to have probably a lot of retired veterans that live up around that area. That's right, and they do. They're in need, but it's quite amazing how many uh, veterans in the age group that would be potential customers of this uh, community Living Center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's quite high. We think we'll have a wedding list of four or five hundred right wow. off the bat, Right wow. here in the East Tennessee. Wow. Now how many did you say we could house there? 108 bed facility. 108. Okay. So that's kind of small but the the way the VA wanted it done it cost a lot more money so we had to mm -hmm. scale down the size of our home because of that. We thought we'd have 140 beds mm -hmm. under the old scheme act but it changed to 108 because of the new design. Now Will you all, will that be kind of like a nursing home can apply for additional beds down the road or yes. once you're set for 108 you'll have to stay there? Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, the land was donated free and clear by Steve Williams, Thomas Williams, and Robert Wright. The, the site is a very good sized piece of property. We can expand later okay. and enlarge ourselves. Oh, great. Okay. And I know where that is. It's kind of, sort of, across the street from Rainsman over mm -hmm. yes. on Westview. Yeah, Westland Drive. Westland 1940 Drive. Westland Drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, 29 acres is what it is. So okay. we've got lots of room to expand and, and do a lot of uh, greenways and hiking trails and uh, parking lots and things like that. Oh, How good. neat. Yeah. Well, my dad was a veteran, but I, I have two brothers, and you probably know both of them, two, two, um, sorry, two uncles left, my Uncle Ralph and my Uncle Ted. Yes. And I can't imagine anybody that would enjoy something like that anymore because my Uncle Ralph, as you well know, loves to tell you about D-Day and Normandy anytime yes, he gets a chance. So yes. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful thing for our veterans. Oh, it is. It, it is. Uh, what's really good about it, and folks don't realize that just yet, when this happens, the veteran awareness in this community will just go up by notches, several mm -hmm. levels, because it, it just brings in groups and people want to donate, want to do things, and the activities that goes on at this home, mm -hmm. it just makes the veterans awareness uh, quite more than it is today. And to me, that is so very important because, yes. you know, these people, especially our World War II vets, Yes. I mean, those boys that went had no idea what they were getting into. No. Yeah. I know my dad went from Polk County, mm -hmm. and he knew how to hunt deer, bear, boar, turkey, rabbits, anything like that, but I don't think he had any idea what he was getting into. Of course, he went to the Pacific Theater where Uncle Ralph went to the European theater. Yeah, I've heard so, Ralph talk about his adventures. Oh, I'm times. sure you have heard Uncle, Ma yeah. Uncle Ralph tell it. You know, any, and, and folks, let me tell you right now, if you've got a World War II veteran that's a friend and they want to tell you a story, listen to it because those and are dying out down. fast. And write yeah. it down. And write it yeah. down. Yes. We think the, uh, the, we get the top of the list, we get the money, we go out and build our home and stuff, it might open in, in 2015. Oh, great. So that's still quite a ways off. Great. Well, actually, so, though, that's. Not so we're far. just <laughs> behind Montgomery County, or is there, I mean, it's, yes. we're right there. It's based on the day you apply, that's the date you move up the list. Okay. Montgomery County applied in 2006, so and they're just a couple of years ahead of us. Okay. But we should be right behind them. So once they're anointed, then they come off the list and we move up. That's right. That's right. And that is wonderful. Yeah, it's a really good thing. The VA gives 65%, and we have to come up with a local match of 35%, which okay. we have done. Oh, but, wow. Uh, it's a commitment, it's what it is, Yeah. Uh, from an honest donor and from the city of Cleveland, from Bradley County, mm -hmm. uh, to make that 35% match. Hot dog. That's, so that's wonderful. the that's VA wonderful. has to have all those things in place. So the uh -huh. land has to be donated free and clear, which, mm -hmm. which uh, we've done. A fellow named John Simmons has been instrumental in, in yeah. pulling yes. this off. Right. As you know, he's not with he us anymore. Away. Right. So it's kind of a dream of his that we're yeah. kind of fulfilling his dream. Kevin Brooks has been very active in, in what's going on. He's helped us out quite a bit. For Kevin's lots a good of fellow. He sure is. He really, he is, really is. is. Now, let me, did I understand this right in some of the things I've read? Because I tried to prep myself for this. 
that once the, the VA home is built, then that becomes the property of the state of Tennessee. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Okay, so... It'll be state of Tennessee employees, it'll be a state of Tennessee building. And right now it's being held by the American Legion because the state doesn't want it. It's a liability and they don't want to uh -huh. touch it until actually the VA funds are there and they've got the architect approved and they've got a contractor right. signed, then they'll, they'll take control of it. Wow, okay. So how many employees do you think this is going to bring in? We're thinking about 200, 210, something wow. like that. Wow. Wow. See great. the difference in a, uh, or one of the unique characteristics of a VA run facility is they have a doctor and nurse there all the time, 24-7. Right. And they have a lot more employees because it's a government payroll. Right. So it's a much better run facility and there's a lot more surveys they have to pass. They're inspected almost constantly. So they're prepared for it. They have enough employees to mm -hmm. take care of all that. Well, I saw a picture. Um, it was just a drawing of what it's supposed to look like in mm -hmm. the pods. You know, like there were four pods here and then four yeah. pods over here. And we call that a wagon wheel kind of uh, situation with a hub in the middle. Okay. That'll be the main headquarters, you might mm -hmm. might say, and everything will branch out from there. Well, now, will that be like a community room or a, in the center, or what will that be? Yeah, it could be. It could be an office conference room and a, a place to greet people that walk through the front okay. door. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. I just think it's a marvelous opportunity. Yes, uh, it is. For Bradley County. And, and it's just wonderful for our veterans. Because sure, if people like John Simmons and the Anonymous Donors that just give us a, a big boost to get started yeah. in that direction. Absolutely. And we're way down the road a lot more than most folks are. Oh, I, I just think, and, and I got so excited when I was saw the news Tuesday night, because I'd already talked to Joe about being on yeah. this morning, and so I thought, oh, good, we've got some really good news to talk mm -hmm. about. So. Oh, yeah, we've been bombarded by TV yeah. and newspapers about <laughs> oh, all this. Yes. And it was good. We didn't get published. That was good. You got fantastic publicity. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, Especially really with good. that 23 million figure. Yes, yes. When, the gov when Governor Haspel said 23 million, um, I thought, wow, we could build that thing right here, right yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. But, if we had the money, we could yeah, start tomorrow. That's right. It's not exactly that way. Yeah. But he really didn't mean 23 million, did he? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, going to be. I don't like to shoot down what he has said. I know. He's just a little bit off on the figures. Well, I'm sure he appreciates the fact that he, you know you're right. kind of tempering the. But but the total cost of the facility will be roughly 23 million. That's right. Okay. True. It's 108, 108 bed facility. I think it's 110 thousand square feet. Wow. All together, and it's divided out in different buildings, so that just makes it more expensive. You know, yeah. you got to have well, yeah. connectors between them and parking lot for each one. Right. And heating and air on each unit. And yes. Yada yada right. yada. Okay. And then you got to be able to pay all those bills. So the bills yeah. going to be more expensive than just right. a regular. Yeah. facility. Have you already had people signing up? Have, have you had I've had people call wanting to do that, get their name on a wedding list. Wow. Now the one in Knoxville has a wedding list now, has, ever since they opened in, in 2008. It's over 400 long today. Wow. That so, is, what, I we, mean, that's wonderful. Give us a phone number there at, okay. at your office, Joe. Uh, my office there at home is in the courthouse, room 105. I'm a veteran service officer, 728-7100. And thank you so much for being on with us yes. today. This is exciting. It is. Yeah, I we, mean, I'm really excited about it. If we get this. on the list, it'll be even more exciting. Yes, it will. <laughs> That's one of the main hurdles we're trying to when get through. See that shovel yeah. go in the ground. We're going yeah. to get so excited. It will be unbelievable. Joe, thank you so much. And if you all have any questions, give Joe a call or go by his office at the courthouse. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back with Judy Baker, our storyteller. Thank you, Benet and Nancy. Thank You're you very You're so much. welcome. Thank you. Would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Byron Winters with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Contact me for all of your business insurance needs. 
From general liability to workers' comp, commercial auto, and business umbrellas, Landmark Insurance has you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Some noise off today because that's my producer and director over there. Joe, and we're going. Was, shh. Thank you so much <laughs> for being on with us. And Joe did tell us something as we went off the air. Yes. That is spouses. Yes, spouses can live at the at the veterans' homes. So with 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 their with the veteran, with their veteran, you know. Yes. And, and contrary to some belief, the female might have been the veteran. That's true. So and Judy Baker's with yes. Me. Judy is our Hi, Judy is our storyteller, <laughs> and I just love having Judy on. But I didn't ask her to come on and tell a story today. What I asked her to come on was to tell us about telling stories. Yes. And I'm excited about this because some of the Cherry's Jubilee money is doing this. So, exactly. So tell us about it. Believe it or not, this will be our 17th no. annual Okoye Story Fest. No. 17th. Really? It is probably the longest, one of the longest, if not the longest, storytelling festival in the state of Tennessee outside the National Festival in Jonesboro. That is unbelievable. Um, the Smoky Mountain Festival folded um, last year. There mm. aren't that many left outside of Jonesboro, but we're hanging on. Very good. good. Thank you, Cherry's Very, Jubilee. Well, you know, we're so y'all buy your tickets, things, but but we are part of what's yes. happening is from Cherry's Jubilee money. Exactly. So tell uh, us about it. Well, a few years ago, to begin with, we did partner with Arts and Education, which is part of Allied Arts Council, mm -hmm. which is funded in part and sometimes in all by monies received from Cherry's Jubilee, mm -hmm. and we realized we were bringing a storyteller to Cleveland every year. They were needing visiting artists, so why not marry both yeah, absolutely. things? Exactly. And so we stepped in and partnered uh, with Arts and Education. This will be the fourth or fifth year that we've done it. Elizabeth Rose is our feature teller this year. This is her third trip back to Cleveland. We had her many years ago, then we had her for our 10th anniversary, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we've got her back this year. Uh, we're so excited to have her come back. She's originally from Etowah grew up just across the ridge over there in Etowah. Yeah. She's an educator now in Roan County. Mm -hmm. Fabulous storyteller. She tells East Tennessee stories, she tells Appalachian stories, and she tells some wonderful folk tales from all around the world. And through uh, money from Allied Arts, mm -hmm. um, Cherry's Jubilee, Arts and Education, we're gonna take her to six local schools. Wow, that's great. By the time she gets through um, um, Friday afternoon with her last school, she probably will have told to probably close to a thousand kids. That's she's going to be tired. <laughs> <laughs> but if she's a school teacher, she's used, used to, to it. She's yes. used to this. She's, right. she's used to this. Um, we'll start bright and early with Waterville Elementary at nine o'clock Wednesday morning. And by um, noon on Friday afternoon, she will have been to six schools. Great. Now, tell us what she's really coming in here for. Yes. The highlight of her visit will right. be the concert, and it's a concert. You might think concerts are only music, but a no. storytelling event is a concert. Oh. Uh, the storytelling concert will be Friday night, February the 10th, at the Museum Center at Five Points, which mm -hmm. is our other sponsor, uh, beginning at 7 o'clock. Now, I do know it's Valentine's weekend, mm -hmm. but go downtown, do a little shopping, mm -hmm. go out to dinner, mm -hmm. yeah. and for five bucks a person, up to $15 maximum for a family, bring your sweetie over to the museum center and hear some wonderful stories. A real treat. Mm -hmm. A real treat. And there's places you can eat downtown. Oh, uh, yes. Catch. 
Cafe CBC, R- Cafe, Cafe Roma. Roma. Mm-hmm. You can come there. You can run by the Red Ribbon and get you a last-minute little vol- uh, Valentine gift yes. if you need to. Go right across the street to the museum. Uh huh. Um, another uh, sponsor we're so lucky to have this year. We wrote a grant to Volunteer Energy. They are so wonderful. You know their customer share mm-hmm. program. Yes. yes. Um, your electric bill, if you're a Volunteer Energy person, yeah. your electric bill is rounded up yes, to the I next are. dollar. And, and I are, and I am so proud. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. And all that money is pulled together. Uh, for worthy causes and events and things out in their service community. Mm-hmm. And, Cle- and Braddock County is mm-hmm. in their service it's community. Right. Yeah. And they're helping sponsor the concert for the community on mm-hmm. that Friday evening. And you know, that's so amazing because it's pennies a month. Oh, yeah. To each of you. But when yeah. you look at all of the customers, all those pennies just add up. It adds up. To lots of money. And when you causes. look in your bill every so often, uh-huh. you'll get the little newsletter. Uh-huh. Well, yes. open up that little newsletter and look at all the entities that have gotten mm-hmm. funding mm-hmm. Uh, from Volunteer Energy. It's, it's, it's neighbors helping neighbors. It's, it is. And yeah. I always look to see, because I check off, oh, yeah, I know them, I know them, I know them. And, and I'm just, I'm thrilled to death to mm-hmm. see my money going yeah. to good, worthwhile causes. Exactly. We got money from them when I worked at Cleveland State. Yeah. yeah. Before I retired. Yes. Yeah. And, and Junior Achievement has gotten grants yes. from them before. And I mean, there's just all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. That, and, and so this is great. Now, this is called Okoe Story Fest. Okoe Story Fest. Um, the word actually comes from the wild apricot that grows up in its uh, the Okoe region. I think that's you know, uh, a variation of the Indian word. But our logo has the apricot um, flower well, I did not and seed pot on it. Uh-huh. How neat. For the festival. It is so neat. We're so excited. Um, we're committed to preserving and sharing the art of the oral tradition. When you mm-hmm. think of arts, you automatically think of painting or you think of singing or right. you think yeah. of dancing mm-hmm. or theater. Mm-hmm. But the art of the oral tradition is actually older than oh, all of right. those. Oh, yes. right. It's probably the, the oldest. oldest. Mm-hmm. of all the arts uh-huh. because people it have been communicating. Writing. It predates <laughs> writing. Right. And in fact, we're learning that storytelling can help children write. Wow. You use the images that come in your head when mm-hmm. you're listening to a story and mm-hmm. you learn to correlate that with the words you're putting down on paper. Wow. That really writing is the second language. Mm-hmm. It's the hearing and the, the correlation of the spoken word to the written word that comes first. There's studies done on that, uh, studies about the correlation between storytelling and literacy, mm-hmm. how children who have heard stories at least been read to. Yeah. Right. You don't have to be a professional storyteller standing up in front of your kids every night telling them a story. As long as you read to them, Absolutely. they're learning to make the connection between the word they're hearing, the word they're seeing, and finally the word they're going to write. Right. And that's another reason to have Elizabeth in these schools, even separate from the arts aspect, mm-hmm. is um, part of the literacy aspect. Right. right. That if she tells a folk tale, well, here is what I'm speaking to you, mm-hmm. but here's where you can find it and read it for yourself. Mm-hmm. And after you've heard it and you've read it, then you can take those words and you can put them in your mind and uh, coordinate with your own experiences and tell the story again. And see, one thing about storytellers, too, I, listening is a lost art. It's a lost oh. art. It and when I taught art. second grade, I used to do listening skills. I would either tell or read a story, and then they had to tell me back. These are second graders, and they had to tell me back what, you know, what the name of the dog was, what color was the dog, this and that and the other. But we don't listen, and even in conversations with people, we no. don't listen. You're waiting. We you get your point. That's you, right. Yeah. Or we shut them out because... Yeah. I've got to go do something else, yeah. and they're getting into my time, you know, exactly. like exactly. that. So, so that's another thing that I love about storytelling is because it, and most of the time, y'all, when Judy tells a story, she's so dramatic and she does it so well Wonderful. that, that you, you do listen. Mm-hmm. You don't want to miss anything. Exactly. It will help the kids to sharpen that skill, and it's also something that once you hear it, they can go home and they become a storyteller that very day because they're going to tell mommy and daddy, guess what happened today? Mm -hmm. Now, what age students will she be telling stories to? Well, most of the elementary schools will be grades three through five, Uh but she's going to Yates Primary 
And the way um, that Miss Ingram has worked it out with Elizabeth is Elizabeth is, Elizabeth is going to tell three times at Yates. She'll tell to the K's, to the first, and to the second. They're a little smaller group, right? Little smaller kids. Uh -huh. You get a little closer, right? And it'll help. Well, yeah. and you have actually, even though it's not that much age difference, you do have three learning Big stages yes. right there. Exactly. And um, we're taking her to the Truesdale School. Great. They will love it. Oh, yes. It's just such a broad spectrum. Yes, it yes. is. That Elizabeth is going to be helping yeah. and exposing even more to storytelling through another grant through Allied Arts. Um, Maureen Olin and I worked at Truesdale mm -hmm. this past summer for oh. um, a couple of days. They did a workshop. They yes. did wonderfully. Uh -huh. It was great. And That's and this is this too. is so wonderful that that we're doing this. Roughly, how many members do you have in the Cleveland Storytelling Guild? Oh, around twenty to twenty-five, mm -hmm. something like that, um, give or take. Uh, not everybody comes to every meeting, but uh, one thing that we have done: we were here at Cleveland State for a long time. We started at the library, but we had the most wonderful problem: we outgrew the space. That, that is we a wonderful were in. problem. It is, yes. As so, Dr. Hyde in Cleveland State said, "Come over here." So we came over here. It's very good. And we met and partnered with them on several projects. And then when the library built their addition, mm -hmm. they have got the most wonderful community room. Yes, they do. If you haven't been to the library, you must go. Go today. Go today to the library. <laughs> yes. And it's such a place for storytelling. And they said, come back. They said, come back. <laughs> and we said, uh, we will. Yeah. And now people can... It's a little easier to find yeah. than trying to wander around the campus. Right. If you're not familiar with it, it mm -hmm. kind of intimidates people. Yeah. You know, if you're not familiar course, with it. we love having you. We loved being yeah. here. <laughs> but sometimes it was yeah. like, I yeah. can't find it. But right. It's easier to find the library. Right. And our meetings are the second Tuesday of the month, beginning at 7. And what we do every month without fail, we begin with stories. Mm. And the community is invited. You can come. And listen, come in. If you're going to the library, come wow. in and listen to some stories. If you have to slip out, slip on out. It's not going to bother us. But we begin with at least an hour to an hour and 15 minutes of stories. Oh. And I say that goes really else. fast. Yes. It does. It's crazy. We'll have mm -hmm. different people um, in charge of, of different months. Okay. This, this month, uh, the member that's kind of leading the program says, well, we're going to do love stories. For Valentine's. For Valentine's. Okay. Because we're actually meeting on Valentine's night. Okay. Uh, but come on. Enjoy a cup of coffee or a sandwich at Lassiter's. Yeah. Yes. That's a great Check. little place. Mm -hmm. It is. They got mm -hmm. some oh, wonderful hot chocolate. If you can get a seat. <laughs> right. I mean, it's right. really popular. Can get there. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on in with us. Yeah, okay. if you can't get a seat. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we got all kinds of things people can do yeah. for Valentine's without having to spend a boatload of money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that is what is so nice and what is so much fun. Now, if anyone's interested in contacting you, how do they do that? Uh, the easiest probably way to do it, uh, you can call the Museum Center. Mm -hmm. I don't have their number off the top of my head, but you can call and ask what time the concert is. Um, tickets are $5, $15 family maximum. Mommy and Daddy and six kids, you won't spend more than $15. Um, That's a deal. That is a deal. If you want to call me directly about storytelling, the meetings, the Coy Story Fest, any of our programs, it would be 479-7887 or email me at tell1. Tell one. Tell one. I love it. <laughs> BellSouth.net. Mm -hmm. uh, the Guild website is TN Tellers for Tennessee. TNTellers.org. Mm -hmm. uh, but come. And see, this is wonderful, yes. folks. And, and what I love about this is they're bringing it into our schools. Yes. It's not every day that we can bring these things into our school, just like we were talking about the symphony. We can't take the symphony into our schools, so we have to take the kids there. But, but, but Judy and, and that group is going to come into the school. So, yep. And we thank you so much, Judy. Well, we thank and, Allied Arts. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and it's always great to have Judy on. I've had her on telling stories and, and uh, now have her on telling you about this storytelling event. It's been a great day for us. Thank you all so much for being with us. And we will see you next week. Next week. And yes. tomorrow will be Bye. the Alderman Day. Yes. Friday. Yes. So. Be sure you check in with them on Friday. You never know what's going to happen with them. And Judy, thank you so, much. so much. And I go really red.